Welcome to today's session. This session, you're going to need a couple of weights. Um, I'll put everything in the description below as well. Um, so we're gonna be doing our glutes, hamstrings, chest, and triceps, kind of like the back of our body today, and a little bit of back as well. Um, so what you're gonna need for your legs is kind of like mid heavy weight. I'm using 15 pounds. Um, also for my chest, I'm gonna be using 15 pounds and then 10 pounds for my triceps. So the goal through all of my workouts is to do somewhere between like eight to 15 reps. Um, if you can easily do 15 reps, your weight's not heavy enough. Um, but if you can't even do like eight with good form, then your weight is too heavy. So um, I'm, okay, we're gonna do our warm up as I chat. So to warm up, you don't need anything. We're just gonna start by kind of hugging our body. So you're opening your chest nice and wide and then hugging yourself. Opening our chest and hugging. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned in yesterday's episode, um, I like to do progressive overload. So that means every you know few sessions or few weeks, depending on how your body's feeling, um, you'd be increasing your weights. So that's something like pay attention to what you do for chest, triceps, and legs today. Um, I always like to like note things down because who can remember these things? Um, so then maybe in a couple weeks, you progress to heavier weights for each of these exercises. And we'll just do one more here. Just opening up our chest muscles and back. So feet a little bit wider, but hip distance apart. We're just gonna do pelvic circles so just rolling through your pelvis. I know it feels kind of weird. Um, I always like to do a little bit of warm up, a little bit of mobility to start, turn our muscles on and start with our breathing as well. And just relaxing your jaw, relaxing your shoulders, your hands. We'll do one more in this direction. And then reverse. And yeah, progressive overload, which basically just means you're just progressing the load, <laughs> um, has definitely helped me to get stronger because I used to just be like, oh, triceps, that's my eight pound weight, and never increasing. And it's like I said yesterday, if you're never increasing the weight, you're just gonna stay where you are and not get stronger. And one more here. And then we're gonna do a little bit of light good morning. So your feet are again hip distance apart. And you're gonna put your sit bones kind of back to the wall behind you. Your back is flat and then standing up. And you can start kind of maybe with some baby ones, just a couple inches. And then progressing. I've just been sitting so far this morning, so I'm really tight <laughs> in the hamstrings. Do three more here. Neck is nice and long. Shoulders are relaxed. And last one. And then we'll just do some heel kicks towards our bum. So stay nice and wide, and then you're just gonna kind of kick heel to bum. Turning on those hamstrings and your butt muscles. Getting a little warm through the legs. Oh, and I forgot to mention, as always, you know, put on some music in the background if you need that to kind of pump you up. I would put on music, but I mean, people like to listen to different things and on YouTube, you have to pay for it. <laughs> Good. For four, three, two, and one. Okay, so now we're gonna do, um, you're gonna need your heavy weights, both of them nearby, but we're gonna start with just one weight, heavy weight. So I'm doing 15 today. Um, I honestly could go harder, but I don't have, I have these weights which are good and I'd recommend them. They're the, um, like any brand, like Oflex or whatever that you can adjust them. So it goes from like five pounds to 50 pounds. It's just 
then I'd have to like grab 15 and then switch it and put 20 on and switch it. So I'm doing 15 today. But I'd rather recommend trying to go harder or heavier. So for our single leg um, deadlift here, we're doing a split stance. So your feet, I'll show you first this way, our hip distance apart, our working leg. So for me, that's my left leg is forward and my um, non-working leg is behind. And all you're gonna do, I'll turn to the slide here to show you. So our arm is engaged and our back muscles are working here. I'm not just letting my shoulder drop and I'm also not like hunching up. It's kind of in that happy medium. And I'm also not letting it hang forward. So kind of like what we did in our warm up, you're gonna hinge up the hips here, but you're also, so you're sending your bum backwards, your sit bones behind you, bending at the knees slightly, reaching down, and then you're gonna stand up nice and tall. So my working leg has like 80% of the weight in it. My other leg is just acting as a kickstand so that I don't fall over. And my knee is staying kind of in the middle of my foot, a little bit over ankle. It's not, my knee isn't bending forwards over my toes. And as you do this, you really want to think you're pressing this foot through the floor, turning on those muscles even more to work. And as I said with our arm, our arm isn't just hanging loosey-goosey. Our back muscles are working and our shoulder muscles to hold the weight and not just let it like fall forwards. Use your breath, nice and controlled. Yeah, see, I could go a lot more. Oh, well. We've got three here. And two. And then last one. And then we're gonna switch to the other side, other leg. Same setup, hip distance apart. You're not on a balance beam. Transfer most of the weight now to that front leg. And then bending here and standing up. If you need to have like a wall, you need to use the wall and have your other hand out to assist you, definitely do that. Or a chair or something. Yeah, these weights are good because you just buy like one set and you have all the weights you need. It's just for me filming these videos, I don't want to be constantly changing them out for time. And we just got ours um, like pre-owned and they look brand new because that's the thing about fitness equipment is people will use it like twice <laughs> and then sell it. Good, neck is nice and long. We've got three here. Really pressing that foot through the floor for two and one. And then you're gonna grab your other heavy weight as well. And you're gonna come down to your knees. If knees aren't good for you, you can go into a bridge position. We'll be doing that later. And you can just do some bridges. So my knees are about a little bit wider than about shoulder width apart. And I'm kind of making like a triangle with my feet. That's just how I like to do it. My weights are at my sides here on my thighs. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit your bum back towards your heels, but don't like rest it down. So you wanna keep those muscles working. And then you're gonna come up and press your hips forward, but not like too forward. We're gonna keep in that working range of motion. So you don't wanna be resting at the top or the bottom. So I'm really creasing at my hips. Again, arms are turned on just so that you're not like dropping the weights forwards. You can squeeze your bum at the top for a little extra. We've got five and four. 
Next, nice and long. Three, two, and then last one. So now we're gonna do little pulses. So you're gonna stay low. You can drop the weights if you need to. And you're just gonna go up and down an inch. <sighs> Breathing through it. You've got five, four, three, two, and one. Pressing up. Carefully put your weights down. So I'm using these for my chest weight, which is why I use them for my legs. Um, so these, again, like I said, are 15 pounds. And when you're using heavier weights, you want to take your time coming down to your mat. So we're going to do some chest presses here. I have enough room away from my reformer. So how I come down when I have heavier weights is I kind of like prop them up like this. And then you're like carefully in control, roll back and bring them with you. You don't want to be like trying to reach or straighten for them and hurt yourself. Okay, so um, my palms are almost facing each other. I'm making like a A shape with my um, weights or like a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna come down, hover just like above the mat like an inch and then press up. Coming down in that kind of 45 degree angle and pressing up. Try not to pause at the top or the bottom. And when I said about like eight to 15 reps, if like, you stop when you are good, if you, if I'm still going here and you are you know, shaking, you can't do another one in good form, you stop and take a breather until like our next exercise or take, you know, a few seconds but you never want to just keep going in really crappy form and then you start making bad patterns and you just get into that. You could possibly injure yourself. We've got three more here. And two. Last full one here. And then we're going to pulse. So we're going to come down pretty low and then just pump up an inch, down an inch. So we're in the bottom range here. Breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Press it all the way up. Oh, so these pulses did me and I couldn't have done like another good set or good rep there. So now carefully come up. Um, if you're using the same weights for triceps, Maybe you are, but generally our chest is way stronger than our triceps, so probably a lower weight. I'm using 10 pounds. And then again, carefully come down to the mat for our skull pressures. So arms come up, um, hands are about over shoulders, my palms are facing each other, and I'm just bending at the elbows and then straightening at the elbows. My wrists aren't doing anything. They're staying nice and strong. And really think of the backs of your arms doing the work here. I know for a lot of us, that's especially the spot we wanna work, get rid of that like kind of flabbiness, at least definitely for me. And if you're ever like between sizes, like maybe five pounds is too light, but 10 pounds is too heavy, um, a great, thing that I recommend is buying wrist weight or ankle weights, either one or two pounds, because then you can kind of work your way in between and then work your way up to the next set of dumbbells. Okay, I'm slowing down here. We got two more. And the last full one. Okay, and then we're doing pulses, but not too many. So staying again in the bottom part here. Whew, I can't do too many more. I've only got three, two, and one. Oh my gosh, I'm done. But you keep going if you need to for five, four, three, two, and one. So you gotta listen to your body. <laughs> okay, coming up here. Not coming up, I lied. Back down, we're doing bridging. <laughs> Just check my notes. 
Okay, just make sure things are out of the way. So for our bridging today, let's have our hands, as you guys can see, about a hands, or feet are about a hands distance from our bum. And we'll start just hip width apart. We'll move out a little bit wider in a minute. So we're gonna do just our straight up and down bridging for our spine stays in neutral the whole time. So we're not gonna be like curving it or arching anywhere. Let's prepare with an inhale. As you exhale, pressing through your feet, lifting up. And now this is different than like a yoga bridge. We are trying to stay, like I said, in this neutral spine. My ribs are staying down. And I kind of have like a line from my shoulder to my knees. And then lowering bum down. Exhaling, coming up. Inhaling to lower. Make it a little bit more difficult. So you have your hands on the mat if you need to press into your arms. It's totally allowed. A little bit harder is you just have the backs of your arms on the mat. And then the hardest level would be hands up and pressing up. Like reaching your knees far away from your shoulders, opening up those hip creases. We've got three here, jaws relaxed, and two, last one. You're gonna come up and you know we're gonna do some pulses. <laughs> so coming up and then just lowering hips an inch, lifting an inch, lowering and lifting. Check in right hip, left hip are going up and down at the same time. You got five, four, three, two, and one. Come down for a second. We're gonna walk our feet wide. So about the width of the mat, slightly turn out your toes. So your legs are in more of a V shape. And then we're gonna lift up and lower down. So gonna take your options with your arms as needed. Check in that your shoulders are relaxed. Using your breath here. We've got five, four, three, oops, two. And one, and then no pulses, just relax. You can swim yourself up. I'm gonna look my notes here. Okay, so we're coming up again. Take your time getting up. Don't give yourself a head rush or anything. Grab one of your heavy weights. We're gonna go back to that split stance deadlift. How we started. So one foot forward, one foot slightly back. Make sure your hips are square, shoulders are square. Catch your breath. <laughs> and then bending at the hips. Oh, and then standing up. Maybe you pick a spot on the floor to stare at. Don't be like me. Looking all around. Driving through that foot. And I always say this, but your neck is nice and long. You're not looking forwards or down too low because you don't want to have back pain. We've got five here. And four. Check in with that arm's not just hanging loosey-goosey. It's engaged a little bit. Last two. And last one. Then we're going to go a little bit quicker, no weight. So now it's just down and up, down and up. If you need to hold on to something, go for it. 
We've got five, four, three, two, last one. And then we'll switch to the other side. I'll just turn around here. So getting in that stance, make sure you're set up and square. And then join me when you're ready. Always take your time getting set up. You can always pause the video. And that's the good thing too about working out here with the video instead of like a live class. So you can pause it if you find, yeah, these weights are way too light or way too heavy. You can go and adjust. Do not disturb when I'm filming these, I think. I was getting a random spam call. We've got three, two, and one. Carefully place that weight down. And then catch your breath. Try to not take too long. You want to keep that muscle working. I, my hands always just find my hips. Just a way for me to think about keeping them square. Level. For four. Three. Two. Last one. Ooh, shake it out. Okay, we're coming back for our next round of chest and triceps. So move weights wherever out of the way. Carefully come down with your chest weights. Scoot over so we're not the reformer. And we're coming up into that kind of 45 degrees or A shape again. Coming down and lifting up. Again, try not to rest. Barely just tapping the backs of my arms to the mat. And your weights can like touch at the top just barely, or you can keep them a little bit apart. Think of those chest muscles pressing. We've got four. Oops, three. Check in with your form. If you're failing, then stop. Last one. And we have our pulses, okay, for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Press it all the way up. Oh. Okay, triceps time. So carefully switch your weights if you're switching. And then bring yourself back down carefully. Take a break if you need to, if you need to kind of regroup and reset. Because our triceps were working with our chest. Okay. <laughs> that was more for me. And palms and face each other. Hands are shoulder width apart. Bringing them down, just bending at the elbows and straightening at the elbows. Bending and straightening. Just check in that your wrists are strong. It's almost like if you had a wrist brace on. See, my mind was always like eight pounds is my tricep weight. And I'm really trying. So then I put eight pounds on with like one pound wrist weights and then I get two pound wrist weights. So I'm really trying to get out of that mindset of like, oh, this is my go-to weight. And you know, always getting stronger. For one more here. Okay. We have our pulses. I don't know how many I'm gonna make, but we'll get down for 10, nine, eight. Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna give me more seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh yeah, we're doing our bridging. Okay, so now our feet are again about hip distance apart, like how we started last time. 
we're gonna do, you're gonna lift up here. You can press into your arms to help for this one. You can just do regular bridging if that's what you need today. Otherwise, we're gonna be marching. So you're gonna transfer weight to the left foot, bring right leg up to tabletop. Lower right leg down, transfer the weight to your right foot. Lift your left to tabletop. And then just keep transferring the weight. Take your time here. Make sure you're nice and controlled. Your hips are staying relatively level and up in that good bridge. Try not to sink. Shoulders are relaxed from your ears. Hands are relaxed. And then we're going to finish our bridging. Bring your right leg up to tabletop. We're just going to pulse up and down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Bring that foot down. Transfer the weight for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Other leg comes down, lower with control. Try not to just like flop yourself down. We're gonna do those half deadlifts. So we're in that kneeling position. Get your heavy weights. So again, I kind of made like a triangle position, holding your weights with your engaged um, like back muscles. So again, I'm not just like dropping. And then sitting my bum back towards my heels and stand from rising up. But always staying in motion, trying not to pause. We've got five. Four, three, last two, last one, we're going to stay low and do our pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. We're done with all of our weights, so you can get them out of the way. We're just going to do a little chest and tricep burnout here. A bit more out of the way. Okay, we're going to do some push ups. <laughs> if you hate push ups, you don't have to do them. You can go back to some chest presses. You never have to do anything you really hate, but I'm going to be doing modified ones on my knees. And we're just going to be doing like top half really quick here. So hands a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Make sure you're not walking your elbows. You're kind of in a plank position. And then coming down and up. I'm working at my full range. But also since this is a burnout, we're at the end of our workout. My muscles are already pretty tired. We've just got six. Five. I might talk through these <laughs> for three, two, last one. Okay, no pulses, don't worry. Take a break, give your wrists a little break. I'm gonna finish with some tricep um, presses or push ups. So, for this one, knees are hip distance apart under your hips, hands are in front of your shoulders a little bit, but shoulder width apart. Try to keep your weight over your hands and not like in your bum. And you're gonna press down, forearms come down towards the mat, and then press up through your palms. Again, if you hate these, go back to doing skull crushers. But we're not here for long. Again, try to keep that weight forwards. Just works your arms more than having it back in your butt. 
We've got five. Four. This is it, then we stretch. Three. Two. Last one. Oh, okay. So, we'll do a little stretch here. Um, we can just start with our chest opening up nice and wide. Take those big breaths. Start to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system. So that's when it's telling your body, like you're out of fight or flight now, you know, when you're working out. It's telling your body, okay, we're safe. It's time to relax and recover. Your muscles will start to recover the more you get into the parasympathetic nervous system. And then let's do a little tricep right here, which I know is hard if you just stay for stretching, especially like if you have kids and stuff and you're just like, oh crap, like I don't have time for this, but just take like one minute, two minute with some big deep breaths to get into this state. It'll help your recovery. And then we'll just do a little um, glute stretch. So you can do this sitting up if you want, but I just like to do it lying down. You cross one ankle over your knee, push that knee away, and then reach through. Keep trying to push that knee away for that hip opener. And you can stay still or you can rock side to side. Find what feels good. If you have some time at the end to just kind of relax, lie there, you could do some more stretching. Oh, and switch sides, sorry, if you're not watching, you're just listening. Um, yeah, like I said, this really helps the recovery. My goal is never to be sore, like really sore the next day. Obviously, if you haven't worked out and you're kind of waking up your muscles, you might be a little sore. But, I mean, I hate when I like can't function the next day between a workout. So, you want to get to that point of, in your set, where, yeah, you can't do another couple, or maybe you're a couple away from doing really good form, um, so that your muscles are getting stronger, but you don't want to push yourself so that you're injuring yourself, because then you just won't want to come back and exercise. Anyways, that's it for today. Hope to see you tomorrow. As always, leave any comments, questions, concerns, and let me know what you want to see. Thanks.